The following video may contain content and or language which may be considered unsuitable for younger viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Dave Madsen Entertainment Inc. presents Dave Madsen's NBC Parodies 9, The Jump Scare Abomination, Part 1. Ready to go on another session of NBC Parodies? I'm game. So am I. Then let's get on with the NBC Parodies. The light up letters really light it up. Light up letters, as opposed to... Don't say a lame joke, Anna. Do you want the Raffle Robot to dump you into the basement pool? Why are you so astonished when Anna spits out a lame joke, Zed? I made a mistake. I should not have said awkward jokes because the Raffle Robot had its sensors hijacked and being intolerant over it. And that's why the Raffle Robot made us fall into the basement pool over an awkward joke, which is supposed to be a lame joke. I'm very sorry, Dave. I should have known better to not be so annoyed over dumping everyone into the basement pool over an unfunny joke because I feel worried about Taylor. You don't need to worry about me, Zed. I just don't want to fall through to the pool when it's empty. I understand how you feel, Zed. I forgive you. Is something wrong with the Raffle Robot that makes him very intolerant of detecting awkward jokes? By the looks of it, the Raffle Robot seems fine. But... But what, Astro? The Raffle Robot had been infected by malware. Uh -oh. Is there a way to fix Raffle Robot, Astro? Yes, Natalie. John gave me the Intellistar antivirus so that Ruffle Robot won't get infected by viruses that made his attitude go wild. In that case, we should install the antivirus before the Ruffle Robot goes insane over awkward jokes. I'm game. Later, after Natalie, Astro, Mitch and Maya installed the antivirus into the Ruffle Robot. Letter. Alphabet soup. Soup kitchen. Kitchen sink. Sink or swim. Swim truck. Shrunken on down. Oh, truffle. Oh, no. Hank, do you know what happens when you get screwed up in the wordplay? Oh, I have the keys. You just made the list! Oh, 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 oh. That's not funny, Larry. Do you want to get in the list, too? No. There's no list of idiots laughing at someone over screwing up on a wordplay. That's a long name for a list, but it would be funny if we have that list. I prefer not to do that, Timothy. Oh, okay. Do you have anything to say, Larry? Only one thing to say. Sheesh. Just the sheesh. The letters lit up backwards. The reverse network. Run the program backwards. How do you spell backwards backwards? S-T-R-A-W-K-C-A-D. How do you pronounce it? Joe. Not fun. Dickens. Map. This is a Dave Madsen Entertainment Inc. special news bulletin with generic news reporter. Good morning. A mysterious man in black and white visited the ruins in old Hades to destroy the facility where a group of evil doppelgangers resided. The doppelgangers consisted of evil twins of all the staff members of Dave Madsen Entertainment Inc. They were made by Evil Sam for the Evil Force's supposed hostile domination plot at the studio, but the plot got scrapped and they were obliterated to smithereens by the mysterious man's ultimate superpower. The guards at Punish Land stated that the mysterious man who destroyed the facility in Old Hades was in fact the son of the goddess of Unova, Juno, who had foreseen the upcoming events that would happen in Dave Madsen's universe. More details will follow shortly. Wait a minute. There was a hidden facility in the Old Hades where Punish Land is built? Yes, Dave. It is the remaining facility where some of the evil doppelgangers are residing. You mean that there are evil twins of ourselves? 
It can't be. Keep still, give me a minute. These evil doppelgangers were already obliterated by that mysterious man in black and white. I agree, guy. And they won't cause any trouble to us anymore, since they are just a bunch of vessels made into evil copycats. As the late Philippine actress, Sherry Gill, once said, You are nothing but a second-rate, trying hard, copycat. Hey, someone splashed juice on me. Sorry, Tyler. I'm only teasing you. Did I hear right? The mysterious man in black and white is the son of the goddess of Unova? You heard it right, Cedric. Oh my goodness. Could it be? You two remember that guy, John and Cedric? Yes, Zed. It's our predecessor, Satoshi Akari. That Satoshi Akari? Yes, Dave Madsen Singers. He always wears his signature black and white jacket whenever he shows up. Wow. I didn't know Juno had a son. Neither did I, Serdak. But all of us in the JCTN squad and Heroes League 98 do. We know him very well. He always backs Cedric up whenever he faces very tough troublemakers. He is known as the savior of the land of make-believe, and he's the first devil slayer. Wow! Satoshi is a devil slayer? I didn't know that! Neither did I. Nor did I. I'll bet Satoshi can help us defeat the Prince of Darkness whenever he goes all out. Of course he can help us out. He's Juno's son and he's going to back us up on our true final mission. I wonder what Satoshi is doing in Dave Madsen's universe. Does he know about the Prince of Darkness's darkest plans? Maybe, but Satoshi knows that something worse is going to happen in Dave's universe, and he wants us to prevent it. That's exactly what we see in our nightmares, and this must be our worst nightmare that we ever experienced. The Prince of Darkness will destroy the whole world and make Dave his most sinister puppet. Oh great. Not another very bad nightmare told by Freddy and Brutus. Freddy and Brutus, you should know that those bad nightmares will never ever happen. We know that already, Astro. But somehow, that worst nightmare we have had the last few nights may be about to happen, as we speak. Are they serious about this? Probably. Freddy and Brutus must have foreseen the- Wait a minute. Don't tell us! Are you sure about what you've seen in your nightmares, Freddy and Brutus? Yes. yes. Oh shit! We're all doomed! Seriously? Freddy and Brutus had a nightmare about the apocalypse? This isn't good at all! It really is, Tutti. But we don't need to worry and there's nothing to be scared of. Even if Freddy and Brutus' worst nightmare may happen, as we know it, Cedric's mentor, or Juno's son, whatever we call him. Just call him Satoshi. Oh yeah. Satoshi wants us to prevent this chaotic tragedy from happening, as we must stop the Prince of Darkness's most devastating plan. We should know by now that this is our true final mission, and we must accomplish it for the sake of this universe. Harry's right, guys. Everyone in Dave's universe is counting on us and we must defeat the final boss and stop the clock from reaching its final hour. I agree with you, Cedric. We are the world's final hope, and as the mightiest superheroes in the universe, we can do everything to save people's lives and destroy all enemies. That's the trademark of a real superhero. That's the spirit, Dave Madsen and company. That's how you show your true moxie. But anyway, can we continue with a parody? Oh, right. Let's move on to the next parody. That's a way to spell it out. They put a spell on us. Next parody! This is CNN. Not Shwing! Fourteen, two, three, hike. Moving on. Wrong TV network. It's supposed to be NBC, not CBS. Let's fix it. Hey guys. Mike brought a pizza for all of us. I hope there's no anchovies on that pizza or I'll go crazy. 
No anchovies, please. Hi. I don't think we can eat this pizza, Sam. May I have a piece, Mike? Me too. Hi. Actually. Yum. Stop it, Mary and Zira. Mike is having a bad feeling about the pizza he's holding. That's what I was gonna say, Cedric. Where did you get that pizza anyway? Did Lucio and Lucy give that to you? Yes, Pedro. They told me that I love pizza, so they gave me this box of pizza for everyone to eat. I see. But when I look in the pizza box, it is very horrible, and I can't eat that kind of pizza. A horrible pizza, you say? That really speaks for itself. Good thing you made the right choice on not eating that horrible looking pizza because I know that something in the pizza makes it look weird. Can we see what is inside the pizza box, Mike? Ha. Uh, yes I can. What the heck is going on, Zira? I don't know, Mary. Henry and Pedro just slipped in before we grabbed a piece of that pizza. First Cedric has suspicions over Lucio and Lucy, now Henry, Pedro and Mike? We already asked that question many times now. But will Cedric be able to unveil the DeVille's darkest secret? As Cedric says, he doesn't want to tell the tale for now. What he did is very confidential. Even if you have doubts about Cedric and his secret task, we don't want to stress him out and he takes it very seriously. I agree with Athena and Sylvie. You should snap out of it and wait for Cedric to tell the expose when the time is right. I understand that, Ashley. But it won't be easy since we described the DeVille's as nice people in the neighborhood. Here goes. After Mike opened the pizza box. Oh my god! What kind of pizza is that? What? The... Heck? Let's see. There are bones on the crust. Then there's human blood instead of tomato sauce, and moldy rotten cheese. And there are eyeballs, larvae, sausage made of poop, pepperoni made with dead rats, and anchovies as toppings. <laughs> That stuff would never pass FDA inspection. Are you alright, Mary? She's having a major mind blow, Brutus. I don't think that's a major mind blow. It's a major panic attack. Major panic attack? Alright, that does it. That pizza is starting to make my face break out. And I couldn't stand those anchovies. Take that. <laughs> what the heck, Anna? Why did you do that to Mike? I'm sorry, Freddy. I only aimed at the horrible pizza, but I didn't know that Mike still held the pizza box. I have never seen anything quite so horrible in all my life. Don't feel bad about it, Zira. I didn't realize Lucio and Lucy made those terrible goodies. Maybe Cedric was right about Lucio and Lucy hiding something, but we're not talking about it for now. I just don't get it why Lucio and Lucy give us these bogus gifts. But forget about that. We really don't want to get too repetitive and make Cedric stressed out. Are you okay down there, Mike? I'm okay, Sam. I didn't know Anna hates anchovies and it makes her face break out. That's for the pizza toppings, not the actual food. Later, after Mike climbed out of the basement pool and took a shower, Freddy and Brutus took Mary to the studio clinic, where she recovered from her sudden panic attack, and Anna apologized to Mike for zapping him with her superpower. How do you feel now, Mary? Much much better, Freddy. I can't believe Lucio and Lucy made the creepiest pizza ever made. I feel like my face is burning like what Anna did to me when I called her pizza face. You should know, Mary, that calling me a pizza face really pissed me off a lot. We know that already, Anna. You hate anchovies, and so do Freddy and I. So who's going to buy a real pizza then? I am with this. I'll call our local pizzeria to buy pizza for all of us. I'm here back! Okay, Colroy. Tan, green, and purple. What other colors can the letters be? We're almost there. 
One more try and we've got it. Hey, what just happened to our rident? Our rident has exploded. Not another explosive parody. Please, no more exploding items. We're always having to scrub away the powder burns they leave behind. Okay, seriously. What's with all those bomb jokes in a logo parody? Don't tell me that King Dice planted the TNT on the NBC item to make it explode and go out of order. I think he did, Timothy. Speaking of King Dice, he's about to arrive here in the studio. We meet again, Dave Maximum Company. Oh, euthanasia! It's King Dice again! Well, well, well. King Dice, we've been waiting for you. Before we play another one of your dark games, I have a question for you. And what question do you want to ask me, young man? We know that you blew up the CBS color ID after you tried to punish CBS I for insulting Paramount Television for accusing the Blue Mountain, but now this. What purpose do you have in blowing up the NBC ident? Well, young man, that's a part of Scary Logo Alliance's revenge against the Heaven Logo Alliance for owning the fugitive texts. Wait, what? Not only that, they're also going to take revenge on your mightiest superheroes for destroying all of them. You destroyed our right and test part of the Scary Logo Alliance's plan in retaliation for owning those Scary Logos? Who told you to do that? You don't know? The leader of the Scary Logos yourself. Oh, Pharynx. Not the Oxfield's logo. Oh great, why would the Scary Logo Alliance do this to us? Do those Logo Creepers really want us to have an internal nightmare in our sleep? That's not going to happen if you ask me. No way in heck they're going to do that to us. I agree with you, Miguel. Hold on for a minute, Gambling King. Do you seriously want the Scary Logo Alliance to make us suffer so horribly after they almost brutally killed my boyfriend? Do not yell in front of me, you ugly lady. My girlfriend is not ugly, you square-headed bozo. Silence, you little wimpy kid. Not if we peel off your wacky mustache on your square face, you greedy kingpin. You did it again. You pesky humans really have no respect for me. And why is that? You're not even the king of New Russell City. Yeah. So stop messing with us and leave Dave Madsen and his friends alone. Arrgh. You really made me let off steam, but enough of this babbling around. If you really think you can completely eliminate the entire Scary Logo Alliance after they almost brutally killed that guy in an orange shirt and flying muffler, then you are dead wrong. You are going to face the Nightmare Shrath. Wait, what? Oh no. Don't tell me. That's right. All the creepy logos that you encountered are finally respawned and reunited as one ultimate logo nightmare abomination. Come forth, logo Alliance Spectre. Oh, Pollux. It's the ultimate logo abomination again. And it looks kind of different. Oh my god, that logo creeps me out to the maximum level. I say the same thing, Miss M. <gasps> oh no! Not the logo life! Anything but that creepy logo chamber! How? Why? That's right, you are told. I'm the logo life checker, and I'm here to destroy all of you and the three of us right here in a lifetime. King Dice has summoned the logo life specter to exact revenge. Will our heroes be able to fight off the ultimate logo abomination, or are we heading for certain doom? Find out in Dave Madsen's NBC Parodies 10, The Jump Scare Abomination, Part 2.
This has been a Dave Madsen Entertainment Inc. production.